Robbie, I think we're going to have a great time just from our earlier conversation. I think it'll be lively and fun. So I look forward to it very much. Yes, Clay, I, I absolutely believe that. I think we're going to have a lot of fun on April 19th. This Welcome to an episode of Strategic Conversations. We host insightful discussions with top business leaders. Today, we're hosting Mr. Clay Gaspar, the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for Devon Energy. Mr. Gaspar will be a speaker at the Houston Strategy Forum's upcoming Upstream Symposium. We're really excited to host him. I'm Ravi Kathuria, the President of the Houston Strategy Forum and author of the management leadership book, How Cohesive is Your Company, and author of the book, Happy Soul, Hungry Mind. Strategic Conversations is hosted by the Houston Strategy Forum. If you value these conversations, please hit like and subscribe to the Houston Strategy Forum's YouTube channel. Today's episode is sponsored by Cohegic, a management consulting and executive coaching firm. Thank you for joining us, and we are looking forward to a great discussion with Mr. Clay Gaspar. Clay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for taking the time. We're looking forward to hosting you on April 19th at the Upstream Symposium. And thank you for taking the time to be here and part of our strategic conversation. Ravi, I think we're gonna have a great time just from our earlier conversation. I think it'll be lively and fun. So I look forward to it very much. Yes, Clay, I, I absolutely believe that. I think we're gonna have a lot of fun on April 19th this this discussion is is primed so well, and I, I love your energy. I, I love your approach. So um, I love your intellect. This is this is going to be one good uh, uh, discussion, ex exciting discussion. And I hope everyone who's listening to this video will join us April nineteenth. So play April nineteenth. We're talking. The theme that we have put out is reinventing upstream. I mean, you look at the upstream sector and and. Uh, it's, I think it's been seven years or maybe even longer now. It's, it started in 2014 and we have seen this roller coaster ride, right? The, the whole sector has gone through, uh, I mean, no Hollywood writer, script writer could have <laughs> written um, this roller coaster ride that the sector has gone through. As we enter, as the world changes, as we, as we move forward, how would you think that the whole sector must reinvent itself? And in what dimensions, when I think about if somebody was to ask me how to reinvent, I keep start thinking about what are all the dimensions in which the sector must really rethink itself? How would you see that? How would you think about that? Well, first, I would acknowledge uh, my friends and colleagues that lived through the 80s, and they would tell you that uh, the roller coaster didn't start in 2014. Fair so enough. I think the one thing about our industry, uh, it being a cyclical industry, yes. there are high times, there are low times. Yes. We're always trying to kind of narrow that and straighten the curve, so to speak. But I, I think it's also one of the thing, one of the distinguishing qualities that has made us continually get better. It's nothing like those downdrafts to really question your strategy, your focus. How do we get better? How do we reinvent ourselves? And so just in my my relatively short career, I think about um, moving from conventional to unconventional. But even before that, I think about moving from primary to secondary to tertiary development in the conventional conventional space, moving off to uh, offshore 1947. The very first wells drilled offshore were just kind of out of sight of land, yeah. very shallow, actually yeah. uh, drilling. During my career, I had an opportunity to work some deeper shelf properties and then going off the shelf into deep water. Once again, reinventing what was the capabilities. We do we do moonshots as a matter of course in this industry. So yeah. reinvention, I think, is kind of a, a core competency to the industry. So where do you see the reinvention happening in the next uh, one to five years? Where do you think uh, the industry must focus? Uh, what challenge must it solve? Yeah, I think I think the one to five, I think of that as kind of near term. Yes. I think about five, five to 15 is kind of that bridge to what what happens next. Yes. Really, in that one, one to five, I think we need to really tighten our belts and get exceptionally good at what we're doing. 
Okay. Um, I think domestically, we often think resource plays. I think about for my own company, Devon, I think about the resource plays that we're in. Yeah. How do we continue to get better? How do we expand the footprint, uh, maybe in the basins we're in, constantly yeah. evaluating additional basins, yes. but, but really thinking about the, the continuous improvement mindset uh, of always looking to technology, embracing that technology, making our employees 5X and 10X capable of what they're doing. Yes. Uh, I go back to, I think about our entry, uh, WPX's entry into the Permian base in 2015, mm -hmm. uh, state of the art lateral was a 3,800 foot lateral. That well was typically drilled in 40 days. Yes. State of the art today is a 10,000 foot lateral that's typically drilled in 15 to 17 days. Wow. You know, there is a point of diminishing return. We can't go to zero days on right. that. Right. I don't believe. Yeah. But thinking about how do we extend these laterals? How do we get more efficient? How do we how do we go about the um, the completion so that we stimulate the right amount of rock? We're still only recovering 10, 20 percent of these unconventional resources. How do we expand that? How do we get to that that next incremental five percent that are game changers? How do we re enter these refracts? How do we think about the enhancements like we've done in conventional the, the secondary recovery in resource plays. I think that's all problems we're working real time in the first five. You know, one thing that, that comes up is the, the tier one versus tier two and tier three wells. Do you think, you know, as, as and, and, and this is a question, do you feel that um, as we have exploited tier one wells and with newer technology, tier two and tier three wells will start producing at what we used to call tier one, right? And so are we are we going to find that larger uh, regions of sweet spots, right? We used to, we used to focus on sweet, sweet spots. So will technology create greater sweet spots for us? It, it's interesting. I mean, the nature of what we do as a business is we drill the hard, the easiest wells yesterday. Yes. <laughs> and, yes. And the day before that and the day before that. So we're always drilling that incrementally harder well. You can define it by tier one versus tier two. You can think about maybe there's a, a, a more challenging surface land condition. Maybe it's something technically that we need to do. Maybe there's fault structures or other complications yes. that we need to overcome. But inevitably, we're always moving to a little bit more challenging environment. And ultimately, from a, one from an engineering or geoscience standpoint, but ultimately from an economic standpoint, yielding those returns is always the ultimate challenge. So how do we continue to innovate? I would say over the last decade, when we look back, our rate of innovation has significantly outstripped the natural degradation of the wells that we have in front of us. And so okay. what that has resulted in is our increased productivity year after year after year. Something that the market is very attuned to these days as we look at kind of 20, 21, 22, there is a flattening. And then there's some pockets where you're actually seeing the rollover of that productivity for the same well, for the same lateral length. They're not as good as what they were before. You could ascribe that to a tier two versus tier one, but there's other things in play. You think about well to well spacing. We think yes. about how are we developing these wells? And then you compound that with well cost to really get to capital efficiency. Yes. And it's a pretty dynamic pop problem. Right now, we're drilling the best wells we have ever drilled ever in onshore mm -hmm. U.S., yes. especially yes. in the shales. And yes. I promise you, we didn't wait till 2022 and 23 to drill those wells. Yes, We've learned and innovated you know, over the last decade, decade and a half to get to this point. The challenge going forward is, can we continue to innovate at a faster clip than that normal degradation that we consume through. And that's to be determined. And I think that's a separation for the for for companies to prove up themselves and, and really separate their own value. I, I yeah, and now you know but Clay, now I cannot wait for April 19th. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm thinking of so many follow-up questions and I realize I am, you know, this is meant to be a short video, not an hour long video. And so <laughs> I we're gonna have fun, Robbie. I, I promise. Yeah. I think this is going to be April 19th. So tell me this on April 19th, you you know, we have really the who's who of the industry, their top leaders. What is it that you would like to make sure that we talk? And why should somebody take the time to come attend April 19th? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I, I haven't been to the forum before, so I really look forward to engaging. I love the way you describe the kind of interaction 
um, it, to me, it's all about what what the group wants to talk about. And I look yeah. forward to the conversation meandering along yeah. and and getting that um, that additional perspective. I'm I'm a learner. I, you know, I, I look forward to learning in this process. And it's probably not going to be the folks, the three or four or five of us that are me on stage. It'll be from someone in the audience that that really throws that challenging question. So I think it's to be determined where we take it. And I think that's part of the fun. Yes, no, I, and, and I promise you, uh, we have the best audience in the business. This audience knows how to discuss debate and uh, they will they will come up with some challenging questions and we'll, we'll have a, a spontaneous creative discussion April 19th. Uh, Clay, I'm, I'm, uh, I thank you again for uh, accepting our invitation. Looking forward to hosting you and the other leaders on, on April 19th and hope you all will, will join us April 19th. Uh, it is going to be an exciting discussion. If if today's short video is any indication of it, uh, Mr. Gaspar, thank you again, sir. See you April 19th for sure. I look forward to it. Thank you, sir.